All right, so welcome everyone. I'm Rajneesh Gupta, and with me I have Jemin Patek. This is the mock interview series. Uh, Jemin will be the interviewer, and I'll be the candidate. He will ask me certain question, and I'll answer him. He might ask some counter questions as well. So uh, that's the process. Uh, before we go ahead, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon if you're new to the channel. I mean, if you are an existing subscriber, okay. So without taking much time, let's get started. So, hi, Jamin. How are you? I'm good, Rajnish. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much, Jamin. Okay. So my first question is, can uh -huh. you explain what are indicators of compromises? So indicators of compromise, or we in short, we call it as IOCs. Uh, it's yes, basically a kind of a forensic evidence, okay, that the attack has been executed or maybe intrusion or host exist in the network or it indicate the presence of the threat in the network so it simply suggests that the endpoints or network may be breached or uh, so if, for example this this ioc can be anything this can be a malicious uh, and uh, blacklisted ip address this could be a file hash this could be unusual network traffic domain name uh, suspicious log entry anomalous uh, activity in the network any red flag in the in the uh, web traffic transaction uh, the point is i see is is it's or looking for ioc or monitoring i ioc is all reactive process with that means uh, we only finds the ioc once the attack has already been or the system has already been compromised so IOC is like the information, the information that indicates that the system had been compromised. And this information can be uh, anything from the name, system name, file name, uh, malware or malware file hash or system IP address, as I said earlier, or uh, it could be anything, suspicious uh, registry changes or uh, suspicious domain name entries as well. So yeah, these are some of the uh, these are some of the examples. So, yeah. Okay. Got it. Uh -huh. So, have you heard about uh, Wireless Total? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah. Okay. So, how did you use it? So, basically, whenever we come across any, any new IOCs, so as a security engineer, uh, we look for the IOCs to analyze uh, or, you know, to... Uh, um, we look for the IOC or even the security researcher, threat hunter as well. They try to look uh, proactively look for the IOCs. But if we come across any IOCs through the logs, events, or alerts as well, so we upload them on Virus Total. So Virus Total is a free tool uh, by Google. So uh, you know we can upload a file, the suspicious file, or but the simple or the safe way is to get the hash of the file. And then uh, upload that hash of the file onto the virus total. Uh, we can even uh, submit the IP address, domain name, URL, uh, as I said, the file as well. And then we get the idea if it is a malicious or not. But on behind the scene, virus total is basically uh, has got a list of uh, has got a multiple antivirus engine. So it has got more than hundred of antivirus engine. So the moment we submit those data, those uh, IOCs, uh, like file, IP address, or URL, it uh, virus total scan that file against all the antivirus engine. So we get the score out of hundred. How many, how many antivirus detected this as suspicious? We can also sub, we can also contribute or submit our own, uh, you know, our own findings as well. So yeah, that, that's 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 virus total. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever encountered with uh, any IOCs? Yeah, I mean, so there, there are multiple uh, IOCs that I came across. Some of the most common one, of course, the IP address, URL, and those. But uh, some of uh, some of the some of unique some of unique ones are related to you know unusual outbound network traffic that we uh, that that I get to know through this Splunk or through this SIM. Uh, 
that uh, through the same correlation rules. So if we observe any unusual outbound network traffic or maybe it's the anomalous uh, privilege uh, activity through that that's get alerted through the FIM tool or cyber arc related tool and then those event or alert comes to these Splunk SIM tools and uh, maybe it's the any red flag in the login maybe it's <clears throat> maybe someone tried accessing to their company corporate account or system from any other uh, geolocation or maybe someone tried accessing the VPN from any other geolocation like China, Russia, or any other country. Or uh, it could be HTML response sizes as well. So usually the HTML response size is smaller, but if it is larger, that could be a, a malicious uh, indication or IOC as well. Or maybe it's a suspicious registry or uh, system file changes as well. So if that has been identified, that goes to the FIM, the file integrity monitoring check. And then the alert goes to the Splunk SIM or any other SIM for matter. And then, then we get to see that. And then we start our investigation as a part of the, uh, you know digital forensic DFIR. And then it, the, the IOC can also be DNS request suspicious or anomalous behavior as well. So these are some of the, some of the common uh, IOCs uh, which are different from the regular one. So yeah. Okay, got it. So, Rajesh, yeah, this is all I have for today. All right, so thank you so much, Jamin. Um, so, guys, now it's time for a detailed explanation, and uh, we'll cover uh, a demo for Virus Total quickly. And let me share my screen here. And um, all right, so here you go. Um, you can see this is Virus Total. You can visit virustotal.com. And uh, you have three options, file, URL, search, OK? On the search tab, you can submit your URL, the IOCs, basically your IOCs. Maybe it's the URL, IP address, domain, or file hash, OK? You can also submit the URL here and uh, file. You can upload the file. In this uh, in this uh, detailed explanation, we'll cover IP address and uh, file hash, OK? so. We'll go to GitHub, and these are the list of blacklisted IP address. So we'll take any IP address. Or maybe we can take this one. Uh, submit this IP address. Hit Enter. And uh, perfect. Can you see six security vendors flag this IP address as malicious out of 89? So this Bitdefender detected this IP address as phishing. Fortinet detected as malware, uh, malware URL. Uh, I'm not okay. This is by Webroot. Detected this as the malware again, but rest everyone, you know, see that as a normal and clean traffic. Uh, you can also go to detail section. That's where you will find the basic information where this IP belongs to, autonomous system number, and uh, you know, a fingerprint, a street. HTTPS certificates information, other relationship with uh, date has been uh, you know, detected, and what was the previous historic data as well for this IP address. And there is a community. In the community, you can also collaborate. You can look at the graphs and everything. Uh, there, there are voting happen from everyone. If you are a signed up user, you can also submit a comment as well. Okay. Uh, I can, I can. Choose another IP address and see what's the response comes in. Uh, go back, or maybe we can. Excuse me one second. Oh, oh, oh. We can click on search tab and uh, hit enter. This is another IP address. Okay, this is even more cleaner this, than this one. Okay, so this is just one out of 89 malware or security vendor detected this as malware. Uh, so most likely this will be treated as a clean traffic. Okay, now let's take the file hash. Okay, let's take any file hash. These are file hashes of malware. Okay, you can see various malware hashes. So we can come to the virus total in the search tab. You can you can even submit the file hash. I'll submit the file hash. Hit enter. Let's see. Wonderful. Can you see 53 out of 67 vendors, security vendors, 
have detected this as the malicious. So you can see uh, AVG, Bitdefender, Claim AV, Silence, Elastic, E-Scan, um, Kingsoft, McAfee, uh, Symantec, uh, with Secure, all of them have detected this as malicious file. And you can see this is the MD5 hash. So uh, for those who are not, not, not knowing this, so hash is basically a unique value of every data, of every file, okay? So let's say I have a PDF file. I can get a unique value of this PDF file. This will be same uh, depending on the algorithm. So MD5 hashing algorithm will give you the exact same hash number. SHA-1 will give you the same, exactly same hashing uh, you know, number. Then SHA-256 will also give you the exact same number. So, so because it's safer, in spite of sharing the file with everyone and then finding if it is malicious or not, it's always safe to share the hash of it. So that, uh, you know, virus total basically manage the file and the hash value against each of those files. So it's, it makes sense to simply submit the hash file and then see what's, what's the, uh, if it is malicious or not. Then you can take a look at the relation and historic data as well. And in community, you can also submit your feedback. So you can see someone submitted uh, Joe Sandbox analysis is also done. Joe Sandbox is the is the is a sandbox online sandbox solution. Um, there's a there, there are a lot of other submissions done. Hybrid analysis is also a sandbox. So they have also submitted their own analysis. Analysis you can also sign up on Virus Total and submit your information. Okay, so this is Virus Total and this is very very useful. Um, every almost every software analyst use it. Uh, it's, it can be integrated on some EDR solution. If you signed up this, to this account, you can also get the API key of virus total. So one, if that has been integrated with any of the third party tool like EDR solution, so you don't have to manually come to virus total and submit those samples. It can be done directly from the EDR solution as well. But if you don't have it, you can visit virustotal.com and submit the sample and get the results. All right, so this is all for today. This is me, Rajneesh Gupta with Jemin Patak. Let me know if you have any questions. We would love to answer that. Bye for now.